And ladies and gentlemen, you're fabulous actors. Well, thank you for that introduction, Alan. Uh, thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. I have a... So do you have a question for me? No, I have a job for you, Adam. Oh, you do? <laughs> Does anyone have any questions about the production? You want to take that first, Matthew? I knew Casper from Between Love and Goodbye, uh, which I auditioned for him through my manager. I was up for the lead role in that, and um, I, he had the rights to this uh, film at the time, um, and I, uh, I told him I would be perfect for it. <laughs> <laughs> he made me audition like, for like three months, so, and they audition like every actor in LA. But I, well, I actually saw an audition notice. I live here in the Valley, and I saw an audition notice. I subscribed to a few LA audition sites. So I drove over to LA for the audition for this, and about a week later, drove back for the callback, and about a month later, was cast and uh, went over to LA to, to film it. It was a, a fantastic experience. Casper was fantastic, is a fantastic director. I know he has quite a few films in his repertoire now and I think this is probably one of the best he's ever done. Your casting story is actually interesting, John. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I have a because question. They wanted to go with someone, uh, the casting director wanted to go with someone uh, sleazier, tan, like with gold chains, and, but they loved your like, lovable grandfatherly take. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously you shared um, the screen with the director of the movie. Can you talk about how this in any way colored your performances or made it more challenging or interesting? Um, well, I'd known Casper for a couple of years, so um, it made me on one level more, more comfortable with him. Um, and on um, another level, it did add some, some strangeness to the chemistry, since he was running back and forth from being behind the camera to um, in front of the camera. And there's sometimes an um, antagonistic part of a relationship between actor and director. So uh, it, it made, he wasn't just you know, part of the cast, he was also our leader. So it um, definitely colored the experience. But when I, when I watched the movie, it just, it, it seems um, he, 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 got, he managed to get the role right anyway, so uh, <laughs> I thought. Didn't you, John? Yes, he did. <laughs> uh, the press, uh, I'm over here. The press is so powerful in Hollywood and, and I, that probably would never really happen. I'm just uh, curious if you could enlighten us and could you outline a scenario how they handle in real life situations like that in Hollywood? Um, how, how, how one would? What? Yeah, I mean, I mean if, <laughs> if you were that guy's agent and, and you know, they really had that affair in real life, how would, how would that be? handled. I mean, they, they wouldn't come out. Oh, well, I'm definitely not privy to that kind of information. Um, as a young, struggling new actor, I don't know. Um, it's, it would just be conjecture for me. Um, it was fun to play, but I, I, don't, I don't really know. I, I guess I'll figure it out when I'm a big, famous actor. <laughs> Hi. Um, I was just a little curious about what kind of research you did for your roles. You first. <laughs> wink, wink. Well, to, to, to quote Morgan Freeman, I read the script. <laughs> <laughs> and we've both seen porn, so... <laughs> I, um, I, I really feel... Um, I, upon reading the book, I identified strongly with the character, even though um, I haven't experienced, you know, porn and prostitution and, uh, and the dark side of Hollywood as he has. But I, I definitely, I think any actor feels that 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 pull, um, that that towing the line when you're a young young actor, um, of. Uh, you know, you don't want to fall prey to the predators in Hollywood. Um, this character is kind of an, an everyman. Um, 
So I think every actor kind of relates to, to his struggle, the process of his disillusionment, moving to, you know, L.A. I've certainly been through, through all of that. The parking tickets, I didn't need to research that. <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know why the writer changed? I mean, I, I guess the Hollywood ending is a happier ending, but the book ends less happily than the movie. Was there any discussion among the cast with the director and the writer as to whether to go with the book ending, which was substantially different than the movie's ending? <laughs> uh, there definitely wasn't discussion with the actors. Oh, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, most of these questions, I only only know the answers because Casper is a good friend of mine, but. Uh, he wanted, he thought it was such an L.A. movie uh, with a, such an L.A. experience. Um, it should uh, have a happy Hollywood ending. And I think I'm, I've watched this at a number of festivals and, and just the, the reaction and the, the release from the audience is, um, is so palatable. It, it obviously is what the movie needed. Um, it's, it's such a relief to see these characters get, uh, you know, a little bit of their... Um, uh, Something good finally happens to them, so uh, I, th I think that was the idea behind it. And th the book ending isn't isn't real either, so I heard. I thought you two were fabulous. Thank you. Look you. Beautiful without your shirt, just saying. <laughs> but what I really would like to know is what type of roles would you two like to play in the future? Um. I would like to do a role where I don't have to take off my shirt, actually. <laughs> um. <laughs> um, maybe someone not so naive. I, I actually am a very good villain, believe it or not. Um, uh, um, I don't know what I want to do next. I want to be Sean Penn. I don't know. What does anyone want to do? <laughs> Well, I get to play senators and governors and judges and the like just because I'm old and bald. But uh, I would like to play in a Western. And I, I just had an audition for a web series, and hopefully that comes along. And I get to play our mayor in a Western. That'll be fun. Some of the scenes I found um, uh, were kind of difficult to watch uh, because I kind of, I felt, uh, I don't know, it was so intimately personal. I was wondering, is it ever hard for you to watch or are you, when you watch yourself in a movie, are you, it's just acting, it's just, it's, I'm not connected to that, it's just a job or are you ever as emotionally connected to it as your audience is? I, um... I definitely have been very emotionally connected to it. Um, I've, I feel like I've watched it on, on so many levels, like where I'm just watching the movie, you know, or where I'm being the character when I'm watching it, or if I'm, you know, judging the acting. Um, so I've experienced that on all those different levels, depending on how much I drank at the pre-reception. Um, <laughs> um, it, it's some, it, it is sometimes difficult, but I really love this movie and I'm very proud of it, so um, I, I, do, I do enjoy it. I didn't watch it today because I've now been to, I think, almost 15 festivals. <laughs> but um, I, uh, the, the only, I can't watch the sex scenes. I, 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 that, is, that is weird. Um, but, uh, but everything else is love it. So. I'm so great. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> How, how big a concern is it with uh, playing a gay character? Do you feel like you're going to be typecast at all? I, I definitely was reticent about taking this part when I uh, first did it, not just because it's a gay character, but because it's such um, racy, racy material. Um, uh, I, di I didn't want to do anything that was kind of ex exploitative. Um, uh, and from my modeling background, I'd, I'd done a lot of pretty boy kind of work. But as a, as a young, struggling actor, it was really hard for me to say no to um, such a, a meaty role where I got to display such a huge range of emotions. And, and ultimately, there's no way I could say no to um, uh, participating in an experience like this. And, um, and I think it, it came out, out really well and um, wasn't exploitative at all. Was your your character wasn't didn't even have to be gay? 
No, no. <laughs> and he didn't even have to like what he did. <laughs> but it is, it is a, it's a film that I never thought I would be proud of enough to have my uh, son and daughters go see, and they have seen it, and they've loved it, and uh, it's, uh, it was quite, a, quite an experience knowing I'm in this movie, and they enjoyed what I did in the film. So. I had a couple of questions for you guys. Um, are there any actors that both of you look up to or admire? John Wayne. <laughs> the Western. <laughs> um, Bob Hoskins, ever since I watched Two Frame Roger Rabbit. So. I want to be Eddie Valiant. So. <laughs> Fun. And uh, my only other question was, do you, both of you have any future projects coming up? What was that? Future projects. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, actually, Allison cast me in an independent full feature film that she's starring in. Um, so we'll be shooting that this summer. Um, and I also I'm shooting a short film next week, uh, written and directed by C.J. Cox, who uh, did Sweet Home Alabama and a number of other projects. So. I, I did an absolute vodka commercial uh, a couple months ago. <laughs> Is that enough? What else do you want? I am uh, going to be recording a couple of voices in a doc for a documentary that's going to be animated. It's kind of unusual. Uh, a local producer is going to do a documentary about how to break into acting. And he's already wound up, uh, uh, gathered up interviews with Robert Loggia and um, Dee Wallace and Ed Asner. And we get to voice a couple of people in the, uh, I get to play a sleazy agent. <laughs> and the second character is a bald guy. <laughs> I'm also going to be doing a play here in the Valley next uh, Starting in April, uh, we're reprising a play that we've done a number of times. Uh, it's called In My Humble Opinion, and it's about Jack Durant. It's the restaurant down on Central Avenue, Durant's Restaurant. It's been around for 61 years, and this is the 100th anniversary of the state's birth, so we thought we would, would revise it. I ate it. there last night. Did you really? <laughs> it was good. Well, I play Mike, the bartender. <laughs> So we're going to be doing that at the Viad Theater on Central. How do you make Earl. a Cosmo? Huh? How do you make a Cosmo? I got to ask saying. Cosmo. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's coming up as well, and hopefully some other opportunities like this uh, web series. Can you talk just a minute about the blom blonde bombshell that you worked with? She was great and got most of the laughs. And did you have any impressions? Oh, she <laughs> is. She's she's time. awesome. She. Uh, She's like that kind of off-camera, too. <laughs> I, uh, you know, Allison and I both lived in New York um, during the filming of this movie. We flew out, and I moved first, and, and then she came and lived with me. So sort of the movie in reverse. Um, she called me today. Actually, we talk on the phone every day. We're, we became friends through this movie, and she is, um, she is absolutely insane and crazy and fun, just like the movie. Only, only she's, um, uh, she's married and centered in other ways also. She would probably want me to also let you know that. <laughs> but um, uh, no, she, uh, the, um, she got an agent and manager the first day this screened in L.A. And she has um, had a lot of success in L.A. So, and now she's, she's um, producing her own film so, um, and, and a web series. Uh, so look for all of those things. Uh, Judy was only uh, one day um, part of our, our, our set, but it was like a long day because we had to do all our scenes in one day. And, and um, she definitely got progressively crazy. We all got a little punch drunk after 12 hours, but she definitely was rolling on the floor, you know, <laughs> regaling us with stories about her um, exes. And um, uh, she's a, a kooky character. Allison and I went to her birthday party, uh, I think, two months ago. Um, she was dancing on the bar and like full glitter makeup and um <clears throat> <laughs> I probably shouldn't be telling you all these horrible stories about Judy. It's being filmed too. <laughs> uh 
Thank you, folks.